Hi everyone, I'm Oliver from Lentus.com and this is the second part of the nuts and bolts tutorial. In the first part we created the, the nut, in this part we are going to create the bolts, we are going to add some materials and lighting and go to the final compositing to get to the image result. So let's go for it. In the first part of this tutorial we ended up with something like this, okay, the nut itself. Now in the third layer we separated some of the objects we used while during the creation of it and we are going to reuse them to create the bolt. So we have the screw and we have the knot body. So we are going to use now the knot body. The first thing we need to do is to go into the edit mode and as we see we still have the mirror uh, being applied. We don't need the mirror anymore. And actually I'm going to delete before applying the mirror. Let's go to the edge mode and delete these two edges. Okay, maybe select this face loop and this face loop and delete the faces. Now let's go out from the edit mode and just press on apply the mirror because now we are going to close the top part and we are going to leave this one uh, open because it's from where we are going to get the bolt screw. So we need to close this and we are going to close this by selecting the whole loop with Alt and right click in one of the edges and press F. So now we have an end on here. And once we have the end on, we can go ahead and start cutting with the knife. You can activate it with uh, K. So K and adjust to the vertices. And again here. And one last time right here. Okay, so now we close this uh, with quads. Now let's just check how it looks. Okay, now it's closed and it looks uh, flat. So now we have this uh, this hole here to open the screw. The What I'm going to do is to just move this up and go out of the local view, which with a slash in the number. And here I have the screw. So the 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 reason why I use the modifier instead of the um, screw tool in the edit mode is because now after we use already the screw for the nut, we can go ahead with the same uh, exact parameters and increase the number of iterations because I want the the bolt to be longer than the the nut screw. Okay, so maybe a few more like. 15 should be enough and just press on apply. Now let's go here and just go to W and press on remove doubles just in case. And of course all these vertices has been removed. Now let's press control N just to unify all the normals and we need to repeat the same process we made with the nut screw. Right so all this just go to the front view and we need to select the vertices okay that goes right here all right and now we need to go ahead and also place let's say this will be the limit so press shift s and cursor to select it Okay, and now with B, we can box select until that same position. So now we can press dot in the keyboard and scale in set axis to zero to make it all flat. Now repeat the same process right here. This will be the, the bottom. We need to pick the, the, the limit of the part that is empty. Okay, so this is the limit and shift S cursor to select it. B, let's go right there, okay, and again, S, set, and zero. Okay, now we press set to exit from the solid view mode, press, uh, select everything with A, press W, and remove doubles. And now we can go ahead 
and start making sure that we are uh, putting everything in the snap into the vertices, okay, vertex mode, and also make sure that in mesh we have the auto merge editing activated. So we can press control to snap to the vertices and it will be already merged. So now just repeat the process we did with the other part. Okay, here it looks okay. Also there. Okay, looks like it's already done here. Let's make sure. Yep. So now let's go for the bottom. Here we need to clean these guys. What is the first one? This is the first one. Let's drag it. And exactly the same. Now we need to make sure because these ones are probably in the same plane but the next ones already aren't in the same plane. So this one would be the last one. And there we go. Okay. So now the next step would be to select this top loop and extrude it in the set axis, something like this, just for now, and bring this down, because we're going to join them. Let's place it to something like this. We need now a diagonal part. If uh, we see the reference, we need a diagonal line right here, right? because it makes some kind of uh, creases there. So now we select the screw, we select the nut, Make sure that we haven't we haven't any uh, strange modifier <laughs> in any of them, and press Control J to join them. So now the smoothing, the subsurus mod modifier, is being applied already to the screw. So we go into the edit mode, and as you can see, we have these both uh, edges selected, and we can just uh, you know fill that hole by pressing W and bridge two edge loops. There we have it. So now if we go out, we can see that we have a little curve there, but we need a chamfer. So we add two edge loops here with Control R and putting them very close to the original ones. So now we have some kind of a diagonal line. Okay, perfect. Now we probably need to arrange this a little bit and to solve some triangles, right? We have triangles here. And we are going to do it exactly the same way we did it for the nut. So these ones, let's press uh, X and dissolve. We already have a quad there. Okay, and now we need to solve this one. Because this one Let's see, we have another triangle right here. And we need to start cutting edges. Let's press dot in the numpad to close the camera. And let's see how we do it. Okay, let's just pick this one and hide it with H. And now control R and just add an edge loop here. So now this is already a quad and we can go back here 
Alt H to show this one again. You can go to this edge, press W, subdivide, select this vertex and snap it right there. And now with Shift V, we can select these ones to make them to smooth a little bit this shape, right? To make them to be around the middle of this edge. Shift V. Okay, something like that. So here we already have quads. Now let's take a look at the bottom. What I'm gonna do is to select this, this loop, again with Alt and right click on one of the edges, extrude it in set axis, something like this, scale it down, let's press a comma in the keyboard, so we restore the pivot point to the bounding box center. So now we can scale this one in, extrude and scale again, F, and now we need to close this exactly the same way we closed the top. So we can just select these two vertices. Somehow I can select this one, okay. Press J to join them. And now just with the knife tool, just make three divisions, K, Select the vertices, K, click and enter. Okay. Now what I wanna do is to also add a few loop edges, edge loops here with control R. So we end up with a shape like that. Even we can just select these guys. With C you can uh, select by painting, which is very, very fast. I like it. And with control and plus in the numpad, you can increase the selection, you can grow it. Okay, and now with this, what I'm gonna do is to bring it down and scale it a little. Just like that to make a better shape there. Okay, so now let's check how the screw finishes because we need to um, clean this triangle. So here we have this uh, this polygon over this triangle. So we hide it with uh, H. We can just add an edge loop here with control R. So now here we already have a quad. Let's go back here, Alt H to show it up. Dot in the numpad. And now here we select this edge loop, this edge, sorry, and we can just press W, subdivide, go to the vertex mode again, and move it right there. And now we can just do the same we did before, which is just move them, move these ones a little bit to just mix them a little better, like that. And finally, just pick these triangles and press X and dissolve. So, there we are. Now, what we can do is to go here, dot in the number to get closer with the camera. Press Control 1, Control 7, sorry, to watch from the bottom. And just bring these guys in like this just to make this screw start uh, a little more smoother all right so it's not just growing a lot in the same place this way is more uh, progressive and we could pr probably go up and do the same with these ones so let's go again with uh, seven we can do this one from the top Press set and we can just go like this, something like this. Okay. So now it starts more smoothly. The last thing we can do is probably to decrease the amount of uh, free space. I mean, with the space without the screw that we have here, right? Because I just did it to. Uh, join the two pieces, but now 
at this point we can just select all this and move it down until it's uh, almost in the screw part so now we have our bolt we can put it like this and with M we can send it to the first layer so now if we go to the first layer we have the screw and the nut together we can do something like this so now is the part of the tutorial where we have to pose them let's uh, save this before and let's pose them so we can just go to the front view with one in the numpad and just go to the uh, wireframe mode so we can see how the screws work together you can see that the screw is exactly the same shape because we reuse the same one from the knot in the bolt so now we can just move these objects to make them work together like this exactly now for posing them and to 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 achieve a more interesting uh, you know illumination and stuff maybe we need to give a little part of the screw out of the knot right something like this so the knot is in the middle of the bolt something like this so what I'm gonna do is to just duplicate this with shift D in the X axis let's move it and now just make sure that we have this part here because I'm going to rotate it just this way uh, well let me check something somehow this is not showing the grease pencil okay so I'm going to rotate it into this direction so um, I need to make sure that this part is going to touch the floor because it's the part where where the uh, bolt and nut will be sitting on the floor so let's go to the front and just rotate uh, before rotating let's put the snap back into increment so now I can rotate and by pressing control I'm rotating into increments of 5 degrees which make it very easy to just select a 90 degree angle here something like that okay now we have this other one let's duplicate it again and this one probably make it something like this so it will be sitting into that part and now to finish it I'm gonna just um, rotate this one but let's do something a little more interesting with these ones the knot is going to be a part and this one will be sitting itself on the floor so for doing it, I'm going to make sure that this part is touching the floor. I'm going to put the 3D cursor there, press dot in the keyboard. So we rotate this object from the cursor. And now let's rotate it until this part is touching the floor, like that. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same with this. Just move it down to the floor, place the 3D cursor there, and rotate it to something like this because now I'm going to just move this one out so I can play with these two guys move this into the y-axis and rotate it with comma again to rotate it from the middle of the object rotate it until it's uh, sitting over the bolt okay something like that and now I can move these ones uh, let's just uh, parent them so each nut goes with uh, its own bolt so control P object select the nut select the bolt control P object and the same with these ones nut bolt control P object this means that now if we select the bolt the nut will follow it 
So we can just do things like this to just pose them easily. So maybe let's do something like this. Now let's go and move these ones from the top. Just trying to find an interesting pose for this. Uh, this takes too much space here in the front. So probably something like this. And this one. Something like this, maybe. Okay, I don't want to spend too much time with this. I think this one, this uh, shot would be cool this a little closer like that and now just press ctrl alt 0 to bring the camera to this position and now by pressing G and dragging with the middle mouse button we can increase our decrease the uh, distance from the objects okay something like that now we go to the front view we're going to make sure everything is sitting on the floor Okay, okay. And now we press 7 and from the top shift C. So the 3D cursor goes to the center of the of the scene and at a plane which will be our floor. Just like that. And maybe move it a little in the y axis just to cover the whole camera shot and increase a little more the size okay save this again okay and I think this is a cool shot now we can start adding materials and textures to this uh, to this scene so let's start for the easy part we need a metallic material here so let's just jump to cycles first now just activate rendered mode right here and what I need to do is to apply here a material metallic material and for the metallic material we're going to use an anisotropic BSDF okay this was the floor <laughs> let's call this metal and for the floor actually let's pick another um, material like just delete this one and apply a floor okay now let's select the knot apply this metallic one and now just select all the metallic objects select the one we applied the material to in the last place and now press ctrl L and link the materials so now all these objects have the metallic material we applied to that knot Let's go to the rendered mode and as you can see we already have a metal metallic material now what I need to do is to press TN TN to close that uh, panels and now over here instead of this light I'm going to create my own light so I will create a plane scale it up a little just bring it up or actually I want a daylight scene so let's add a sunlight 
Let's go to lamp and add a sun. Let's bring it up, let's move it a little and rotate it a little bit. Something like that. Now let's go here to the world, use notes, and instead of this grayish color, I'm gonna use a blue color. So this way the, met the metallic parts are, um, you know, reflecting like blue light from the sky. So let's make it even brighter, something like that. Let's increase the strength a little bit. Okay, and now we can maybe play a little with the anisotropic uh, material. Let's make it a little rough. Okay, and this brings this uh, shines here, which is exactly what I want. Let's play a little with the rotation. Okay, let's see how it changes. All right, let, let it be on zero. And maybe increase the anisotropy. Nope. Increase it. Increase it a little bit. So these ones, these uh, shines are sharper. And increase a little bit the roughness. Okay, something like that. This one make this color a little grayish. Okay. And now let's make this light a little orange. Something like that. And finally, for this plane, let's just add a texture. And for that, I'm going to jump here to the UV image texture and I'm going to load this texture, right? This kind of asphalt texture. So let's go to the 3D view again and let's go here, image texture, and just open that one. And it's not this plane, of course, because we don't have UVs. So press U and grab out of the edit mode and here we have it. So if we go full screen here, we are already seeing what we have. Something like this. Okay, let's maybe increase the size of the floor. We can increase the size of the plane or we can maybe decrease the size of the UVs to, uh, you know, to change the aspect ratio of that texture. I'm going to try to find the correct size this way. Something like this. And now maybe I can play a little bit more with the sunlight, maybe increase the strength to gain more shininess and maybe play a little more with the world light, like the strength, increase the strength. You can see now it's completely black. And if we increase it, we gain more blue color in the scene. Let's actually pick a really light blue color just to see what happens. And now inc decrease the, the amount of brightness. Okay, something like that. And maybe we can play a little more with the camera position. So it's looking more from the top. And as it's looking more from the top, we can move these uh, objects a little bit. Actually, let's go to the solid mode to move them more comfortably like this. Okay. All right. And let's play a little more getting something like this so the composition is more to the to the right side of the screen and let's just render this let's see if i can increase this with the gpu mode a 
let's go to the node editor here and start play with this playing with these materials a little bit for example to this one I'm going to add a little noise texture so we can get a little uh, you know imperfections in the in the surface of the metal because this is not completely perfect so let's let's try with it um, let's go to the material here <clears throat> and here we need a search uh, texture noise texture and I'm going to use this noise texture in the displacement channel so let's apply the color in the displacement and here I'm going to apply a converter math and instead of, of add I'm going to select here a power which is here and increase the power quite a little bit so as you can see we are already getting some results here but this is not exactly what I want maybe we can change the effect by going to the input and applying a texture coordinate um, let's try with generated to see how it works let's try with normal nope UBs I don't think it works object okay this is working more as I want it to work okay so now what I want to do is to decrease the scale maybe let's see if we uh, decrease the size of this and it looks that, like that uh, if I decrease the scale they are being bigger I, I need them a little smaller even more okay something like this could be enough and even we can we can mix a little bit this these things like for example we can duplicate this apply the object here and before applying the displacement just make here a color mix and mix these two and what I want to do with this is that here I can decrease the scale and play a little with different uh, size to get different amounts of distortion. You can see that now if I increase the mix shader, uh, this mix uh, node here, we can see more parts of the bigger noise. Also, we can play with the power of these two. Okay, here for example, we are getting pretty much a, a cool noise there but it's maybe too much so we can play with this this could be cool and what I'm gonna do now is to add a power here put into zero so now we don't have effect and now start increasing it until I like the amount of noise that I get Let's put it this on full screen. Okay, and this is kind of cool. Maybe too much. We need to be very subtle with this. Hmm. Maybe we need to increase the amount of small noise. So maybe increase the power here.
play a little with these values. something like that and now maybe increase here the shadow the the power here very very slightly okay let's do it something like this just to get some different um, you know details in the surface we don't need it to be perfect and now another thing that I that I want to do is to mix this anisotropic with the diffuse just this is not correct completely okay but we are going to give uh, the effect of a brushed surface right here right the important thing is that we get a cool result it doesn't uh, matter really if it's completely realistic or or not if we get the result we want then it's cool so for this diffuse what, what we are gonna do is to actually add a texture and surprisingly I'm going to add the same texture we are using for the floor this doesn't make any sense for now but you will get it soon and here we are going to mix this with a shader mix there we go just add this right here okay so now what I want to do is to just apply this texture like if, if it was being projected so it behaves a little like uh, lines here so it gives the effect of a brushed uh, surface but it's not really and for that we need a texture that has a lot of changes and a lot of details like this one exactly as you can see we get some result similar similar very similar to a brushed surface so now what I want to do is to just go here and change the amount of mix so we get more of uh, the diffuse part or or more of the anisotropic and I want this uh, brushing to be very very slight very subtle I want the anisotropic to be the most important one so just play a little with this and maybe to maybe 0 0.25 is enough yeah because here we are already getting that amount of detail okay and now I'm going to play a little more with the um, material of the floor let's just try to apply this texture in black and white let's go to uh, see how I do this RGB to black and white just apply this here and add this to the displacement channel so now as you can see we are getting a little more detail in the floor and now oh, what I do is to apply another converter math and put it right here in the center and instead of add just add a power so with this as we made in the in the noise of the of the metal you can just play a little with the amount of you know of displacement we got in the floor so I think that something like this could be enough already now we can probably um, play a little more with the lighting or something Let's just go and pick here the sun and maybe increase the size a little bit to get more subtle shadows, soft shadows, sorry. Okay, something like that. Maybe add a more orange color, like if, if it was like the sunset or something like that. 
and maybe increase a little the strength or maybe decrease it just try different methods until we get something cool as we are not forced here to uh, achieve a given result we only make uh, want to make a cool image we can play with this until we get something cool and i think that with this and a little color corrections uh, here and there in the compositing it will be pretty cool now we need to set up the render so let's go right here and let's pick a sampling um okay let's go here um just close the node editor for now and here in sampling we're going to increase the clamping to decrease the probabilities of getting fireflies she's cutting a lot of detail let's go to 1.2 Okay, it's cool for me. And now in the render, instead of 10, let's put something a little high. As it's pretty fast, I'm going to use like 500, even 1000. Because now what I'm gonna do is to add a little uh, depth of field in the scene. Uh, I know, I like a lot the depth of field effect. <laughs> you always tell me, oh, Oliver, too much uh, depth of field in that scene. But uh, <laughs> I kind of like it, so I'm going to, to try a little. Um, and here, a little, a little trick is that if we want to, uh, you know, to focus this part of the scene, what we want to do is to make click here, so this 3D cursor will be attached to this surface. Now we can press Shift A, add an empty, plain axis, okay? So as you can see, the 3D cursor stays there, is in the in the surface. We go to the camera, and now by by selecting the camera, you can just go here, select the camera, and go to the camera panel, camera options, and here in the focus, let's pick the empty. So now it will focus in that part, and now we can increase the radius here the size right and maybe a little less than that like 0.6 so you get some depth of field in this part here in the background but the the nuts and bolts are pretty much focused right so after we have this and we have the render samples and the clamping what we need to do because I want to uh, achieve some kind of uh, well let's actually a little bit with this anisotropic fader uh, shader to see what we can get okay this is pretty much okay let let it be like this for now what I want to do in the compositing is that to to take the shining shining parts of this uh, of this metal and make it you know like if it's uh, some kind of lens flare kind of flaring a glare there so um, what I want to do is to go here to the render panel and go to the layers and I really need to to pick here let me check this glossy uh, channels in a different layer so uh, with this uh, with these channels apart we can uh, isolate the shining parts of the scene in a different, uh, you know, in a different amount of notes, and then make them blur them or whatever, so we can uh, achieve a glaring effect with that part of the scene. And with that done, I'm going to take a render and continue in the compositing part. Let's save this first, and let's press F12. All right, so the render is already done. So let's go into the node editor and go to the compositing notes, use notes, activate the backdrop and press here shift control and click to automatically create a viewer node and use this in full screen. All right. 
let's cut this with control and left click dragging because we don't need it for now and as you can see we have here different uh, passes okay different channels so we need to isolate these ones for the glossy if you can see them as you can see we are isolating here the glossy parts of the uh, bolts and actually I think that we could work pretty much maybe with this one we will mix them together so what I will do <clears throat> supply color mix uh, multiply this like this and now color mix add and do this let's see what we have here and I think this is not exactly how it's done maybe it's the add here and the multiply here exactly this is it yeah so in case you are wondering why I did this and not uh, other any other way is because uh, if you look in the blender documentation you will find that uh, the way for mixing the channels is this one first you add the direct and indirect color and after that you multiply them by the glossy color right well but the glossy or uh, the same happens with any other channels in the in the you know in the render <laughs> okay so with this we have uh, this image which is only the glossy colors so what I want to do with this is to apply an RGB curves and make a lot of contrast so we kind of isolate these parts with uh, the orange glow alright and what I'm gonna do with this now is maybe let's try another um, filter blur let's add it right here and let's see what happens with this let's also activate the relative just in case and increase this a little bit with shift so we can increase it very slightly alright something like this for now and we can actually create another blur join this and this one make it bigger okay so now we can just press color mix note that for creating notes I press in, I'm pressing shift A just as for uh, creating other kind of channels or, or other kind of objects in in blender and now I just mix these two guys together in add mode to get something like this and now finally what I do is to just duplicate the, this add one put the blurs at the top in the second uh, input and put the image right here so now as you can see what we get is here you have the difference so we are increasing a lot the the shines and of course we can play with that the amount that we increase the shines by increasing or decreasing this uh, this channel here this uh, factor of the add node also by decreasing or increasing this one we can just get a variety of effects and if you want something even bigger you can always increase these values here alright so something like that looks uh, fine to me uh, now what I want to do is to just apply an RGB curves to the whole image to give some contrast okay and now just play a little with these colors maybe with this we can gain some bluish tones so this uh, gives some more you know daylight effect or something like that and also he, right here at, at this point between the the we add the shines to the real image I'm gonna 
add here a filter uh, filter just put it right here and instead of soften I'm gonna do a sharpen this is too much of course so I can just decrease it until I get something more interesting let's uh, let's try how it looks with and without it so it's a pretty nice difference so let's decrease it a little less like 0.1 and this way I think it's uh, more cool now we, we can press V in the keyboard to zoom in or Alt V to zoom in and out okay like that and now I'm going to just add a vignette effect so let's go right here and let's apply a color mix let's put the image right here or maybe right here it can be done in a lot of ways the vignette effect okay so just try out some things like here I'm going to add an ellipse max mask let's add it right here in the factor so we got this and instead of this I'm going to subtract and do this okay increase the mask effect so this way basically we um, create the opposite effect so now we can just increase the wide and height until it roughly fits the wide and height of the image something like that and now here we apply a filter blur and we blur this a lot as you can see I like to work in a relative mode it's cooler for me okay and as you can see we are already done so uh, I hope you learned a lot from this tutorial uh, as you can see it's not really complex and also it's kind of funny the the trick that I use here uh, just to apply the 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 floors texture into the bolts right to to achieve this kind of brushed effect but it is something that you know a lot of times is uh, is very used just using tricks because otherwise we would need to go back and uh, create a lot of UBs uh, for this bolt and nut and uh, well this is way faster and actually the the, the result is not mm, very bad right it's kind of, of cool so uh, with that and a little imperfections in the surface and uh, just little details that give a lot of uh, you know dynamism to the to the image and then uh, well with some compositing and bringing out uh, of course the the shines okay, we could play a lot again with the with the shines uh, we could play a lot with everything to get a really nice result even nicer than this okay this is pretty normal but uh, well I hope you learned a lot from this I hope you uh, enjoyed it and see you in the next tutorial happy blending